Hi there, this is Vincent Yu from MDSec Consulting. Today I'm going to talk about domain fronting once again. So after Raphael Mudge posted about RFC 2616 section 14.23, um, so that what this base, what this RFC basically states is that an RFC compliant HTTP proxy server will rewrite the host header in the HTTP request to match the domain in the URL it's asked to retrieve. So I decided to actually have a look at this and see whether it's true. So I decided to pick a proxy and the proxy of choice I came across was Sophos. Um, cyber security gateway, so so far web gateway appliance, something like that. Yeah, there we go. So far, secure web gateway. So, I just took a trial of this and decided to have a look at it. So, following this, I have installed it and it's running, and this machine is actually using it. Okay, so this machine's using it. What we'll do now is demonstrate that actually we can beacon out even though we're using domain fronting over HTTP. So I'll begin with Wireshark. I'm going to show you two scenarios. One where, so on, my, on the proxy, I've actually configured the proxy to be extremely restrictive in the content that it will display. And allow allow the simulated employee to navigate to. So this employee's workstation should not be allowed to navigate to social media or anything like. Now, nowadays, modern organizations don't block social media anymore. So hence why this is supposed to be a really restrictive test case. Let me just make sure that nothing's running. Okay, great. So what I'll do now is create a beacon. Let's use a social media beacon. Let's use static.tumblr.com. So same as before, we've now established the beacon and this time to static.tumblr.com. And we're going to generate a executable, a stageless one. Right, let's call it beacon.exe. Okay, now we're gonna just drag it into the VM. Cool, so this one goes to Tumblr. And I'll show you that it actually does block the traffic. So let, let's begin by disabling the proxy just to show that we do get a connection back. Okay, so proxy is disabled. Direct connection out to the internet now. Double click. Okay, we get our beacon back. All right, no, no proxy. Okay. Now, what we'll do now is kill this beacon. Now that the beacon's clo uh, killed, we'll um, go ahead and re enable the proxy. So before, direct, the requests were made directly to, uh, this is just the VM traffic, all right. So the utm.gif ones are the HTTP traffic. So it goes from this host directly out to the internet, uh, the CDN. So what we'll do is now run the beacon again, now with the proxy, and we'll see what happens to the traffic. Let's restart this. Beacon. Okay. We'll look here again. Okay, so no beacons come through, no new beacons come through. So let's see why. So let's take another one of these, okay. So this time it's making a request to Tumblr. A get request, an OK. And there's actually data here. Get request, OK. The static.tumblr.com. 
with a host header of CloudFront. So here we're not sure whether or not the proxy is actually rewriting the uh, host header or not because we can't really tell from this point. So what I'll do is actually open up the console and show you. If we actually type in static.tumblr.com with an IP address of our workstation and click test, so far is the policy that is applied is going to block this domain. So it's supposed to be blocked. Now if I go to reports, we can go to top bandwidth by users and we'll see here uh, we've got tumblr.com and the zero bytes that went went through to the um, the server even though there's 147 hits and we'll see that Microsoft has quite a bit and we'll see that az.gov has quite a lot as well so what I'll do here is I'll show you why it's important to use a large number of categories for some reason the RFC doesn't apply here so we're not going to worry about that and I'll show you why um, so we're going to use cdn.az.gov because that I know from experience that that works and I think cdn.bankofmelbourne.com alright it's finance and the, let's go back to configuration and use this um, let's use the policy um, checker thing because this actually works more accurately so if we do see bankofmelbourne.com Right, we're gonna test it. It's gonna block because it's I don't know why. It just thinks it's malicious. Government, it's all fine because it's government. Apparently you have to allow the government to um to show you content. And then if we do tumblr.com, that's gonna be blocked. If we do Instagram's blocked. And there's loads of others we could try, but funnily enough, I'll show you. Onion.cab will fe be featured in my next video, and check this out. It's allowed. For some odd reason, SoFast believes it's going to be really clever to allow Onion.cab URLs. So, yeah, okay, from here, we'll go back to the main focus, where I'm going to show you why changing the domain suddenly fixes everything. So we've we've established that uh, cdn.az.gov is allowed. If we change that and regenerate the beacon, copy it back over again, replace. Oh, it's in use. Kill it. Replace. Okay, great. Now, let's reset everything again. Let's capture it. Let's click it. Right, this time, it's still making a request to my proxy. And it's getting proper data back this time. And I've actually got a beacon. So yes to categorization for the government. And yeah, I'm doing it over HTTP. There's no HTTPS involved and it just doesn't seem like this RFC is being applied. Perhaps SoFast just decided to make a non-RFC compliant HTTP proxy server. Or yeah, I've still got to play with Squid. Anyways, that's it for this video. I just wanted to show you why Categorization matters. Actually, before I finish, let's just um, do this. Why don't we go to the listeners and we'll have a longer list. So if we if we save here and we do static.tumblr.com, uh, images.instagram.com, cdn.bankofmelbourne.com, melbourne.com, and we can do... There's a few of us, but all right, let's do AWS, a, uh, AWS static.com. Okay. Actually, I think that's going to 
be loud, but okay. Right, so now we've got this um, listener set up. Let's just check there. Oh, AWS is blocked. Okay, great. Wow. So everything's allowed. Like, every, nothing's allowed other than the government. Great. <laughs> so we know what that means. Okay. Um, HTTP beacon, Windows, XE, generate. Right, okay. We've got a new beacon again. Let's kill this beacon. I'm going to copy it over. So this beacon now has... Is going to beacon out to all of those domains and find a way out, okay? So, reset Wireshark. Alright, we're going to run it. Third beacon comes back in. Let's see where it's doing its communications to. So, it's doing the GET request. Now, directly to the CDN. No, no, no. Okay, so 136 is talking to 137. 137 is the one that's talking out to the, C the CDN. You see? It's because of virtualization issues and whatnot. Okay, great. But we can see that this is what 136 does. It does a GET request to the full URL. And it sends this to the proxy, basically. And the proxy then takes that and sends this data to the... The... Uh, my, my web server and this is what the proxy gives back so yeah we at this point we can't really see what what is being used so we can see that Instagram like it tries to use Instagram tries to use Bank of Melbourne tries to use a, A0 AW static and potentially none of them we can see that okay here it's getting this data, here it's actually getting data back. Here, here's something else that's random, I don't know what that is. And here's some more data. So so actually, yes, in some in some areas we are actually getting data back. Anyways, that's it for this video. Uh, I just wanted to show this as a quick, small proof of concept. And there is more of a question as to why so far is either not following with RFC compliancy or um, or I've just picked a, a bad proxy to test with. Anyways, thank you for uh, watching this video.